Hello everyone watching on this YouTube channel all around the world. Uh, once again, uh, we're here to get inspired from a Filipino who have uh, achieved success in the U.S. Yeah. Our guest is a world-class DJ and a radio personality, a hip-hop aficionado, an entrepreneur, and most of all, he loves to help in his community of Los Angeles and fellow Filipinos in the city. Please help me welcome world's famous DJ and a member of the Beat Junkies and Snapback and has made a name for himself, Isaiah Dasho, and he is known as Icy Ice. Hi, Natasha. How are you Hello. doing? Hi, Alicia. Good to Hi, see you guys. Hi, How are you? You too. Oh, <laughs> doing great. Thanks. How are you? Wonderful. Uh, um, yeah, some some work has been coming up. Uh, you know, things are opening up slowly here in the states, and you know, uh, been able to play some cool gigs. But last week, in fact, I played on a yacht right in uh, Newport Beach, so it was awesome. <laughs> Yes, I see. I see. We want to know uh, what got you started uh, with your uh, DJ career. I guess my my fondest memory is uh, growing up in Carson. I grew up in a city that was very multiculturally diverse, but then of course uh, we are one of the biggest Filipino populations in all of the U.S. Grew up around a lot of uh, people that were into hip hop, and with hip hop, there's the dance, the graffiti, the MCs, and then of course the DJ. And so my first exposure was early on in middle school. And then I got exposed to seeing the DJ for the very first time. And after seeing that DJ, it made me want to become a DJ too. So that was my, that's how I got started in becoming a DJ. You have a Filipino blood, right? Your mom is a Filipina. My mom and, my mom and dad, I'm full, full Filipino. Oh, Filipino, oh, but you yeah. don't speak Tagalog. <laughs> I don't speak, no. <laughs> you grew up there. I was I was born born and raised here and Oh I see. I was born and raised here in the States and and then of course my parents experienced some racism early on and so they didn't want me to have the Filipino tongue and they didn't they never taught me the language. So that's why I, I, I speak the way I speak. <laughs> I see. So, Alicia, you, you talk to him more. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Did you have any challenges during the transition of coming into the music part, part of the business? Um, I mean, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of different challenges. Uh, mainly because I was so young. I had a lot of financial challenges. So, you know, as a as a 13, 14 year old, you can't just go outright, get a job or earn some money to, to buy equipment. You, you, right. So some of those challenges, you just have to get kind of creative and um, the little money I had from my allowance, I would save that up and then, you know, do what I can. My, uh, when I did tell my dad I wanted to buy some equipment, specifically a turntable, kind of like this, um, when I when I said I wanted to buy my first turntable, my dad made me work for it. So he made me uh, do a lot of things to earn that money. He didn't just give it to me. He into DJing, of course. The challenges of oh, well, you're uh, you're not exactly black. You're not exactly white. You're not exactly Japanese or Chinese. What are you? You know, you trying to explain what a Filipino is. They don't understand what a Filipino is. Aww. So getting into the music industry that's predominantly dominated by black or white, it was uh, it was very very challenging. And in the '90s, when I was breaking into radio, uh, radio was one of the the main mediums. Just like TV, radio was number two to TV at that time. And for me to break into mainstream radio, specifically here in a big market like Los Angeles, Los Angeles is only the second market to New York in terms of the whole nation. I mean, it, it's a big deal to make it on the radio. I was yeah. one of the very first Filipinos to make it on radio here in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. So and that, you did a show with Rick Dees. You did make it. You were with Rick Dees in the morning. I did make it. And Rick Dees is top dog in radio in the 90s. Uh, as I used to listen to him. 
especially for the morning show. Yeah, you you used to listen to him, so you know, you know, he he was pretty much like the Ryan Seacrest before Ryan Seacrest, you know? Yes, for sure. So, like he did TV, he did radio, he he hosted shows, he made records, but in terms of radio, he was the number one guy in Los Angeles, and I was privileged enough to be able to uh, make it into radio and then be his DJ at one point in time. Kinoy Success is brought to you by Moonlight Conversations and to our sponsors, Perry S, Pacific Invasion, and GNC. Thanks for your support. So, guys, like, uh, tell us about the Beat Junkies and uh, Snapback. The Beat Junkies, Beat Junkies is a crew that I'm a part of. We are a crew of elite turntablists. So, you know, like a pianist, a violinist, a, you know, like a trumpet, you know, that anyone that plays an instrument, we're turntablists. So we, we play turntables as musical instruments, but we are a crew of DJs that really look to elevate and uh, represent and to further the art form of DJing, specifically in an artist type of form. And so the Beat Junkies, uh, we we have been just a, a unique group of DJs, and we all represent the DJ culture. And um, yeah, we're we're a group of uh, guys that are battle DJs. We are a group of guys that are on the radio. We're a group of guys that are also touring, or we are producers, music producers. Mm -hmm. We're uh, we're touring with artists and DJing for them. Um, yeah, we're, we're just a diverse collection of DJs that all make up one crew. So uh, that's the Beat Junkies. Now, and then Snapback is another crew that I'm a part of, but Snapback is more of uh, the type of crew that helps puts together events, parties, nightclubs. So we are more of an event producer type of crew. And so, yeah, Beat Junkies is a DJ crew, and then Snapback is more of a event producing crew. Well, my number one tip that I always tell a beginning DJ is right. if you're going to get into getting becoming a DJ for the girls, for the fame, for the money, if you're going in for any of those reasons, you might as well stop because <laughs> you're going to be out the game really fast. You're going into becoming a DJ for the wrong reasons then you're not going to be a DJ very long. But if you love the music, yeah. if you love entertaining people, if you love touching people's lives positively, if you like you like bringing joy to people through your performance and through your art, then you'll have longevity as a as a DJ and as a performer. So yeah, uh, that's something I always tell people as my number one tip when you're just getting into a DJ you get into it for the wrong reasons, you'll be out the game fast. Right, and do you have to have like any kind of musical talent? You know, my mother plays by ear mm -hmm. and she can pick up anything. Any so, kind of instrument? Any kind uh, of well, we were on America, well, yeah, we were on America's Got Talent. Oh, and I told her to play, I told her to play Ozzy Osbourne's song, Crazy Train oh. on the accordion, on the accordion. Really? Yes, and she did it because I didn't want to get booed. If we were getting booed, she could play it for Sharon. So do you have an ear? You must have an ear for music. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of DJs that never played an instrument that, that are very good at DJing. So, you know, uh, but I think it helps if you have some kind of musicality, just like I your do. grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Crazy Train on the accordion. That Ooh. is awesome. She played Crazy what? Train on the accordion. Yes. So I see, I see, could you tell us uh, who are uh, other celebrities that uh, you played for as a DJ? Yeah. Wow. Um, well, luckily in my career as being a DJ, I, I played, you know, like opening for a lot of performers and every artist and different things like that. Everything from Jay-Z, Beyonce, mm -hmm. Jennifer Lopez, wow. all the way to athletes like Kobe, Shaq, you know, like just everybody across the board all and then authors all the way down to poets and all kinds of performers everything you can name you know mm -hmm. you know i see i'm proud to be pinoy 
with you. Oh, yeah. oh, no, I'm, I'm proud to be from Malaysia. Thank you, appreciate that. But please, next time we speak Tagalog, <laughs> <laughs> so I can talk to you more because my English is only good for two minutes. No, After you're that, fine. I'm gonna have a nose bleed. <laughs> Fine. No, you can do it. So I can find you on uh, social media. On social media, you guys can find me everywhere under at DJ Icy Ice. So I'm on Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. Twitch, Twitter, everything. You can find me on social media. We're gonna media follow you. Yeah, Icy Ice. <laughs> yeah, please follow me. You can also find me on Kumu as well. Every Friday at 12 noon, find me on Kumu. Is it K-U-M-O? Yeah, K-U-M-U. M-U. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Ayan, mga kababayan, mga netizens. Ang dami nating natutunan kay ICI's, di ba? Especially during these times, di ba? Na kailangan natin gumawa ng paraan, di ba? Katulad siya, di ba? Kahit na mga events. Parang ako, na-apektuhan din ako ng events. Pati siya, yun din ang line of work niya. Pero tingnan niyo naman, di ba? Hindi naging hadlang yun. Baga, itong mga ano, hindi naging hindrance sa kanya para mag- magawa pa rin niya yung mga ginagawa niya. At take note ha, same pa rin ang budget ang binabayad sa kanya, di ba? At the comfort of his home, wow naman, di ba? Okay, maraming maraming salamat po for joining with me and...